Welcome to the Rio. I'm Jacques. I'm your host. This is our fabulous lobby. Over here is uh, where the theater is. And uh, right in here, this is where you get your tickets. Thank you. He's uh, having a bit of a bad day. Okay, now we're going to meet Chris. He's one of the managers and projectionists here at the Rio. Chris! Chris! Long night, huh? Think maybe you could wear something more appropriate? Guess not. This is the beautiful thing about being in a movie. Hey, Chris, why don't you play that one? Okay, kids, let's go to the balcony. The Rio was built a long time ago. Arg, arg. Not that long ago. It was 1938, one year before the Second World War. Pika! It was a time before iPods, computers, cell phones, and microwaves. It was a time when cars looked like this, and fashion looked like this. Ooh! The first movies at the Rio were She's No Lady and Something to Sing About, starring James Cagney. Whoa, 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 whoa. The price was 25 cents for adults, 10 cents for children, and popcorn would cost you a nickel. At the time, other famous films were King Kong, Gone with the Wind, and The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Movies were very popular until the 1950s, when something called television came along. Attendance was down 50%, and five theaters in Vancouver had to close. It was time for a change at the Rio. Let's go! Go bowling! That's right, bowling. From 1959 to 1976, the Rio became a bowling alley. 1976. The Olympics were held in Montreal. People were playing a video game called Pong, and it was one year before a little film called Star Wars. No one knows what happened at the Rio from 1977 to 1981. But in 1982, it was renamed the Golden Princess Theater, and showed Chinese language films. Your days are over, mister. Finally, in 2008, a new set of owners revitalized the theater and turned it into a great venue for live music, movies, comedy, and dance. Many people think it's the funkiest place in town to see movies and one of Vancouver's best live venues. Wow, that was pretty cool. I really liked the guy in that movie. It looked kind of familiar. Hey, did you know that one second of film has 24 frames in it and is about one and a half feet long? That means that your average movie would be three and a half kilometers, which would take you all the way from the Rio to Science World. I love science. I hate science. I love it. I hate it. Films these days are built on a platter system. Each reel is spliced together to make one giant reel, which is fed into the projector. Long ago, theaters would use two projectors and use one reel at a time. That's why it was called reel-to-reel. -reel. Projectionists would switch the reel when they saw a burn mark. They had 13 seconds before they put in the next one. This would happen between 6 and 11 times a film, so they had to stay pretty alert. Even easier than the platter system are digital projectors. They are so easy, even a monkey could do it. But being a projectionist was dangerous. See, at the time, film was made of nitrate, which was highly flammable. So the projection booth was called a bunker because it had thick walls and fireproof doors. You guys have seen the Hollywood sign, right? Well, it was built in 1923. The letters are 30 feet wide and 50 feet high. At first, it said Hollywood Land. That lasted till 1949. Then the land had to go. Uh-oh. 3D movies have changed a lot over the years. One of the early films was The Creature from the Black Lagoon. At the time, they had these really funky-looking glasses that were red and blue, and the effect really wasn't that good. These days, we have 
awesome 3D digital projectors that make the images look fantastic. And the glasses are really stylish. Hey, let's see what Chris is doing in the projection booth. Movies come in fireproof containers which hold three reels of film. Each film reel has a beginning and an end which we have to cut off before we can use it. The ends are then rolled up, labeled, and stored so that we can reattach them later. Each reel is then taken one by one and spliced together using specially marked tape. The tape helps us see where each reel begins and ends so that we can take them apart later. The film then goes through a series of rollers that feed the film onto a large platter to be built up into one full movie. The one large reel is then threaded into the projector which shoots light through the film to produce the images that we see on the screen.